So you want to ride on track, but you don't know how to do it. You don't know what you need. You don't know how your bike needs to be prepped. And you want to maybe even think about racing your motorcycle. Well, today I'm going to teach you everything that I know about going from street to track, all the equipment you need, what modifications you need to make to your bike, and ultimately how you can get started racing your motorcycle. Because racing your motorcycle is the best way to get better at riding. Now, I did want to mention this Ninja 400 we're featuring over here, this blue one that we're going to stand in as our street motorcycle is a giveaway bike. Head over to yamenu.co, get your entries locked and loaded to win this Ninja 400. This is a long-term giveaway bike. We're going to be doing some cool moss of this. We have some awesome videos coming up with this motorcycle, so make sure you stay tuned. Let's talk about the bare minimums you need to take your street bike on the racetrack. So the first thing you got to ask yourself is, Yam, what do I need to take my motorcycle on the racetrack? Do I need slicks? Do I need tire warmers? I need race plastics. Well, in fact, all you need to take your motorcycle on the racetrack is this. This is a $3 roll of masking tape because for most organizations, as long as your tires are in good shape and you're not leaking any fluids, all you gotta do is mask up your lights and your mirrors and you're usually good to go. I know it sounds really sexy to get a bunch of mods for your bikes and to make sure that you've got a really bitchin' bike to take on track, but in all honesty, a bone stock motorcycle is more than capable of going on the track. You can take just about anything on the track as a track day novice. I've seen guys taking BMW GSs, Harley Davidson 883s, Ninja 400s, sport touring bikes, electric bikes, and everything else in between for their first time on track. Now you might also say, but yeah, don't I need a full suit? How am I gonna get that? How much is that gonna cost? Well, a lot of track day organizations will allow you to rent a suit. My very first track day about seven years ago, I didn't know if I wanted to get into it and it was a big expense for me. So I actually rented a suit. It was some god awful 1990s purple and white Power Rangers looking thing and it stunk to all hell. But I got it on the cheap. I think it was like 40 bucks to rent it for the day and I got the chance to enjoy it. But if you wanna go on the cheap, you can find full suits that are of good quality for as little as 600 bucks brand new. And if you look on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, a lot of guys are getting out of the track day game and are selling their suits for the cheap. Just make sure you walk in with a deodorizer, or maybe a cleanser and really clean that suit really good. It's not the worst thing in the world to get a full suit that was used by somebody else. You're also gonna want obviously a full face helmet, gauntlet style gloves and proper boots to ride. Track day organizations will not allow you to ride on track without the proper safety equipment. So you don't need an airbag suit, you don't need anything crazy. All you need to go on track is tape and the proper gear. Take your bike, you're gonna have a great time. The next thing we wanna talk about is, well, how much does the actual organization gonna charge me for the privilege of riding my motorcycle on a racetrack? Well, it depends on the organization. Here in Texas, we have lots of orgs that are gonna cost between 150 to 200 bucks for the day. Some tracks might be more expensive if they're more exclusive. We have Circuit of the Americas here in Austin, Texas, and that's probably about I think 500 bucks for the day, 450, something like that. So obviously the more premium a racetrack, the more expensive it is for the organization to rent it for the day, and the more they're gonna pass that cost back onto you. So grassroots tracks like Harris Hill we have here in Austin, Texas, or even Eagles Canyon Raceway, uh, it's a super nice facility, but it can still be considered a little more grassroots, is a little bit cheaper. You also have to consider how you're gonna get your bike to the track, but I'm just gonna assume that you're trying to do it on the cheap, you're just gonna ride your bike to the track, enjoy it, have some fun. That's the bare minimum you need. So let's talk about modifications you might wanna make to your motorcycle. As you get faster, you're gonna to wanna to make some changes to your bike to adapt to your riding style, your comfort level, and your ability to push the bike. But I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. For probably your first 15 track days, keep the bike stock. You can ride a stock motorcycle way faster than you could possibly imagine right now if you've never done a track day. So I would say for those first 15, Focus on gas and tires, just consumables, brake pads, oil changes, those sort of things. Those are the mods you're gonna be making to your bike. Again, as you start picking up pace, you bump up to the intermediate class in your track days, your expert class in your track days, all that stuff. You're gonna wanna make some of those changes. Now for a track day bike, not a race bike, you could start looking at things like suspension. Suspension is gonna be the best bang for buck other than tires. Obviously, I'm gonna assume that you're getting good quality tires for your bike, so I'm not gonna talk about that too much. But if you look at suspension, that's pound for pound gonna be one of the best changes you can make to your bike. This is gonna suit for your weight, your style, and everything else. So, full suspension on Ninja 400, well, it's as much as your heart desires. You know, you could obviously swap in a full set of Olin's front and rear, get a Penske triple clicker for the back, jack the rear up of the bike, make it super aggressive and probably spend close to five or $6,000 on suspension alone. But you can do this on the cheap. You can use the existing fork tubes like we actually have here on our Ninja 400 
um, to swap out the internals, get different springs, go away from the progressive springs that come with uh, the stock motorcycle over here, get something a little bit beefier, a little bit better. Because what you're trying to do with suspension is create compliance in the motorcycle. You're trying to make sure that the motorcycle is gonna operate in such a way that is predictable and reliable, right? Stock suspension tends to be a little wallowy, a little soft, so typically upgraded suspension is gonna stiffen things up a little bit and provide compliance over bumps. Instead of doing this, it's gonna do this. Or it'll do whatever you want because it's adjustable and you should fit it to your riding style. The rear shock is the most important one, I would say, because that's gonna be adjusted for your weight. It can raise the rear of the bike, which is important for geometry. You get the bike to turn in faster. And again, these are things you're gonna start noticing as you pick up the pace. I think the second mod you're gonna to wanna to do as time goes on is the brakes. Man, we talk about this so much here on the channel, but the braking system on a motorcycle is the most important because on track, if you're not doing this, you're doing this. So let's think about how you can do this better. The first thing you should do to any proper track day motorcycle is to get direct lines from the master cylinder to the caliper down here. If you have a motorcycle that you bought off the showroom floor that doesn't have ABS, congratulations, this is going to be very easy for you. All you have to do is swap the lines to a stainless steel line, get a nicer master cylinder, maybe swap out the rotor if you're feeling crazy, you want a full floating rotor, get a sticky set of pads, and uh, you're gonna be off to the races. But if you don't have a motorcycle that has direct line ABS or direct non-ABS, if you have a motorcycle that's lines going back to a module and then back to the caliper over here, this is gonna be a little bit challenging. You're gonna to have to fully take the system apart. You're gonna to have to go from the master down to the lines over here. So my recommendation, if you're able to start with a bike that already has direct lines, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. A beefier master cylinder over here is gonna provide much more leverage over the lever. It's gonna actually position itself in the right way. It's gonna be a radial pole master cylinder versus an axial pole, which provides you more control. Because what you're trying to do with the brakes is have more power, obviously, so you can brake later, but more modulation capabilities. Brandon always talks about the feel here on the channel, right? He's our resident fast boy, 20 years of racing experience. Good. I'm expecting more from those brakes though. What you want to see on the brakes of any motorcycle is the feel. You really want that. Beyond that, you start looking at the kind of superfluous mods, as I would say. You know, stuff like a quick turn throttle or keyless delete or maybe, uh, you know, tank grips, obviously very important. But honestly, guys, all of those things are fun extra add-ons as you get faster so that the motorcycle will be more comfortable and more fun for you to ride. I would say the bare minimum would be that brake, the suspension, and great tires. But I want to convince you guys to start racing. Let's talk about what it takes to build a race bike over just a track day motorcycle. I am a huge proponent of racing your motorcycle. In fact, guys, I don't even like street bikes that much. So let's scooch this street spec Ninja 400 out of the way and talk about our beloved Endurance Ninja 400. I'm sure you guys have seen us talk about this bike before on the channel, but I wanted to bring this up because honestly, this is a budget race build. I know that's hard to believe because we are the front running group in the expert class for CMRA Endurance. Yeah, I know, hard to believe, but yes, we are the front running team on this bike build. So why would you wanna go racing in the first place over just doing track days? Well, number one, you get a lot better, a lot faster when you race. When you're actually out there competing and trying to go as fast as possible and mixing it up with people, you get to observe what people are doing. You get to think more deeply because you're trying to produce a lap time. No disrespect to track days. I used to be a track day warrior myself, but I think that when you're just doing track days, you are not getting better as efficiently as possible. When you go racing, you are the, that is the fastest way you can get better at riding and racing your motorcycle because you're actually out there and competing. So the requirements to go race your motorcycle are a little bit different than just track days. You can't just show up with a taped up bike and go racing. Uh, organizations are gonna require you to do quite a little bit more to make sure your bike is prepped and ready. So the bare minimum you're gonna need are race plastics. You can't have headlights, taillights, uh, all that kind of stuff on your motorcycle because that's gonna be uh, a safety issue on track. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is get a belly pan that's gonna hold fluids. That's extremely important. That's gonna be teched whenever you uh, go and tech the motorcycle. Uh, the other big thing that a lot of people don't really love to do is you're gonna have to safety wire the motorcycle. What does that mean? It means that you are fastening critical components. If you look at the drain plug over here for the oil, the filler cap rather, see right there, it's got that little bit of safety wire and that's ma to make sure that this isn't going to back out when you're on the track. So those are kind of the bare bone essentials that you're gonna need to go race. 
A lot of guys are going to tell you, you need full suspension, you need slicks, you need all this stuff, you need a quick turn throttle. We've seen at CMRA guys produce really impressive lap times on pretty much bone stock bikes. You can take an R6, put race plastics on it, decent tires, and go be very competitive in the novice category. Because here's the thing you got to know about racing. You're not going to go out there and race against the fastest guys. You're going to be in your own class, in your own lane. So if you're worried about track days and some of the stuff that comes around them, I think a lot of the times, honestly, racing is a little bit safer because everybody's level is a little bit higher and everybody's trying to be safe. I've seen a lot of crazy track day footage of guys in the intermediate class just crossing over the lines and crashing into people. That doesn't happen as much in racing. Some shenanigans still happen, but it's relatively safer, all things considered. So let me walk you through some of the changes we've made on this machine to get us to be competitive in the expert class in CMRA. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the mods done on this particular race bike. But again, you can really get it done for racing for about 4,500 bucks. We map this out if you wanna get a rear stand, some body work, some decent tires, because actually starting on the tires on this thing, this is a DOT tire, guys. This is a Conti race attack tire that we love because of the longevity of it, right? So this bike is an endurance bike. We run it for six hours on track with the four-man team. And so we need rubber that's gonna last. And again, this is a competitive motorcycle. We are currently the front-running team in CMRA Expert Class Endurance Series. And uh, we are doing it on DOTs over here. And the reason for that is strategy, because if we were to swap out tires mid-race, we would lose time in the pits. So we decided to just run these DOTs and because we get a sweet deal with Continental. So we are really big fans of these tires, but you don't have to go crazy with it. And again, this is the type of tire where you guys should ride this on the street. So if you had a track bike that you're kind of racing and tracking as well, you could literally use this tire on the street. This is a DOT rubber. Look at all that siping right there. Moving on, the next bit of modification is this rotor. This is a floating rotor. This is quite a bit of a trick part to put on a 400, but I wanted to get it done because I think it provides better feel uh, and better braking power. But again, you can run a stock rotor. You do not have to do this type of thing. It's the type of thing we are doing because we are a front running team and trying to win and trying to be good. Uh, we have direct lines up to the master cylinder over here. And if you notice, the master cylinder is a Brembo RCS 17. Guys, you've heard me sing the praises of the Brembo RCS systems. And this is actually a big bike master cylinder. This does not belong on a Ninja 400. We have to make a couple modifications to make this work on this bike. But uh, per Brandon's recommendations, we want all that feel and all that power from this lever. So we have it adjusted in race mode. We dialed the lever in here a little bit. And my God, let me tell you, this little bike can stop on a dime. It is ridiculous. If you look right over here, this is a brake lever guard. This is another modification you're going to have to make if you want to go racing because this motorcycle is going to be going elbows to elbows with people. You don't want anybody bumping into you and stabbing your brake because obviously at pace, uh, if you're going straight and then someone just goes, that's going to be bad. It's not going to be a good day for you. This motorcycle also has a keyless ignition system. So you can see over here, if I flip this button, it turns on, which is pretty cool. We don't have a key module anymore. That just makes it easier because you don't want to go to the track and forget your key to your bike. I've done it before, it is not fun. You gotta push start the bike, it's a whole mess. So I like to personally eliminate that and just make the bike ready to go. You notice here too, we have a mount for a lap timer. Again, that is not a modification you need to do to your motorcycle, but this is nice because if you're doing endurance laps like we do, it's nice to be able to see the times as you click them off. So you'll notice that this motorcycle has a different colored gas tank and some weird stuff going on. This is a dry brake gas tank. So what this means is that because it's an endurance bike, we can take a big plastic can and just shove it down on this. This is spring loaded right here and it can just shove it full of fuel, which is pretty cool. It makes our pit stops really short. Again, you do not need this to go racing, especially if you are sprint racing. There is no need to get something like this. And you'll notice we have this overflow over here and um, that we have a very high quality body armor um, plastic can over here holding the overflow because uh, there always is that little bit of backyardiganism in racing. So we look over here, obviously the motorcycle has body plastics. We talked about these. You don't want street plastics. We have tank grips because those are really useful when you get the bike side to side. We have aftermarket rear sets that are adjustable. And this is another thing that is a nice to have, but not an essential because all this is doing is just making the bike more comfortable for you to ride. You can ride on stock rear sets, but if you get an adjustable one, you can adjust the motorcycle to be the exact position you want it to be. That's gonna be super important on a bike like this because it's gonna be ridden for so long on track, you wanna make sure you're comfortable. Looking at it being comfortable over here, you notice that we have uh, aftermarket clip-ons right here. So this is a different clip-on set. We have it a little bit lower. 
And again, the front suspension, we had it reworked. This is an emulator kit that actually changes using the stock fork tubes, uh, the characteristics of the suspension. So you can actually modify the uh, rebound and compression over on the suspension and adjust it to your liking. But this is an $800 fork over here. This is not a super high quality part because we are kind of a budget team. We're not trying to do anything crazy. We're not trying to spend $50,000 to win some club races this year. Okay guys? So going on over here, this is a new part. We recently put on a full exhaust system uh, provided by Leo Vinci, which is pretty cool. But again, I know it sounds crazy, but you could run a stock exhaust. You don't need to modify the exhaust system and get three more horsepower. But again, if you're trying to compete and trying to front run, it is definitely gonna be the best thing to get an exhaust system. Moving to the back over here, you see we have the absolutely roasted and scorched Conti road attack over here, or race attack tire rather. Again, a DOT tire, you can see it has siping. This is a tire that is DOT rated. You can ride it on the road. Uh, this has about seven and a half hours of abuse on this tire uh, and it still could keep going. It couldn't go for very long, but it could still keep going, which is pretty sweet. Um, and again, these tires just last an incredible amount of time. Another mod you're gonna wanna do is to get a rain light on your motorcycle. Some organizations are very finicky about this. They wanna make sure you have a rain light because if you ride in the rain and race in the rain, you wanna have a, a red brake light pop up up here. But to be honest, I've seen it. Uh, you can get away with it in tech. If you don't have the rain light, it's not a huge deal, especially if no rain is forecasted, but that is something you're gonna to want to look at as well. Uh, if you look over here in the rear shock, we have what is called a Franken shock. So this is a bit of a mismatch of parts over here. It makes it work for the Ninja 400. Our suspension guru, Keith Hertel, hooked this up for us. He's also our race mechanic as well. And you'll see that this motorcycle now has a, uh, a suspension component that can work for it on a bit of a budget. But again, if you wanted to get crazy, like I said, you could get an Olin Shock, a, a TTX, you could get a Penske triple clicker and really go ham with the suspension. But let me flip this motorcycle around and walk you through the last bit of mods we've done to it and then talk you through what you're gonna need to modify your motorcycle to go race. Looking on the left-hand side of the bike, I wanted to remind you guys that a lot of this stuff is totally optional. You don't have to do this. It's just a nice to have if you're gonna go racing. So we obviously have case covers on this motorcycle in case it goes down get that in case, um, you're gonna be protected. Luckily, this bike has never been down, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think it only tipped over once in a parking lot, if I remember correctly, but we've never had it down, which is pretty cool. We've never crashed it on track. Um, quick shifter system and a GP setup over here. GP setup is really cool. You're gonna be inverting the, the kind of flow of the gearbox because that just makes it a lot easier. When you're actually grabbing gears up, you get to select it down like this. It makes it easier when you're picking the bike off the side to just tap it and grab a gear up. And when you're braking, you get to hook it and actually use your heel. So uh, that's be a modification that I would recommend, but you don't have to do it. Uh, we have a 520 chain on this bad boy, a little bit of a smaller chain, lighter chain that's gonna provide more power going to the rear wheel. That's always a good thing. The gearing on this motorcycle is gonna be adjusted track by track. We actually bring along with us about five or six different rear sprockets per track to make sure that we get the right gearing because you wanna make sure you have the right gearing. Because again, when you're chasing that lead group, every little detail matters, especially in club racing where the talent pool really isn't that deep. And if you can actually do those details, you'll actually get pretty far ahead. Um, so again, guys, those are the things we've done to this race bike. You can see here another little bit of safety wire, making sure that bike is nice and secured right there. But those are the things we've done to this bike to make sure that it is a proper race bike and you don't have to do all this stuff. And I can't recommend it enough, guys. Racing is one of the best ways to get better on your motorcycle. If you wanna go out there, improve, have fun and get good and then take it on the street and then realize that you have so much operating window. That's the biggest thing that it's done for me is racing has taught me that when you're out there on the street, you're operating with such a wide window. If you're, if you're riding at 20%, 30%, you can break super late if you need to, you can adjust the line if you need to, because when you experience racing and actually being able to hustle a bike through corners and realizing that that is the skill set that it takes, when you go back on street, it's really not a big deal at all. So I hope you guys learned something today. If you have any comments, let me know down below. Hopefully we can create a bit of a forum happening down there. Always join the Discord server. We have an awesome track days and racing channel on there. If you wanna get involved with the sport, I think it's a fantastic thing to do. I have a ton of fun doing this. It's one of the best parts about my job is going out and racing some motorcycles. Remember this Ninja 400 over here is a giveaway bike. So head over to yamanube.co, get your entries locked and loaded. You could turn this into your very own fully prepped Ninja 400 and to go racing. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.